Yeah, a, a good question. So uh, here in Issaquah, our water comes mainly from two sources. We have uh, local groundwater wells uh, and regional water supply. Uh, so let's just quickly break that down. So first and foremost, uh, to those of you who live uh, up into the highlands, um, our regional water supply applies particularly to you. So Issaquah is a member of what's called Cascade Water Alliance. Uh, which is a partnership of regional cities uh, and water and sewer districts committed to providing clean, uh, reliable, affordable drinking water to its members like Issaquah. Uh, so the way that it does this is by applying surplus or extra water from Seattle, uh, thanks to an abundance of water in the Tolton Cedar River watersheds. And so that's pretty wonky, but essentially if you live or work in the Issaquah Highlands, uh, in Newport, in Lake Mont, Montro, or the South Lake Sammamish neighborhoods, uh, that cold glass of water on a hot day or the hose water that you're using to uh, keep your lawns or your gardens healthy uh, is thanks to that important partnership. Uh, in addition to that, um, Issaquah also operates four groundwater wells found on the valley floor. Uh, so if you live or work in on Squawk Mountain, Central Issaquah, Issaquah Valley, Old Town, or Sycamore neighborhoods, uh, turning on your tap or taking a shower is thanks uh, really to an impressive system of wells and pumps uh, and treatments and reservoirs, pipes and more. Uh, and all that works together to get water from underground uh, to your home or to your business. Um, there are two interesting exceptions here in the Talus neighborhood and the North Isquah neighborhood. Talus can get both, but mostly just Cascade water, just like the Isquah Highlands. Uh, and then North Issaquah, which is like Overdale Park, University House Retirement Community, which is right next to the Issaquah Highlands. Um, they're actually the only part of town that doesn't get water directly from Issaquah. They get their water from Sammamish Plateau water, uh, which has their own collection of groundwater wells on the valley floor, just like we do. Yeah, the short answer to this question is a lot. Um, so uh, first, if you live in an aging neighborhood, you know, construct, construction crews are either there or they'll be there soon to retrofit and install new water mains, which are the big pipes that bring clean drinking water to your street. Um, a lot of them are old and leaky and too small. That doesn't apply really to the Issaquah Highlands. Um, in communities, newer communities like the Issaquah Highlands, we're focused mainly on improving reliability on uh, redundancies and growth. So there are a couple of reasons why we're focused on that. Um, this means putting infrastructure into these communities to pump extra sources of water um, in case of emergencies like an earthquake, in case of high usage, or in case of growth. So it's projects like these that you'll see pop up in newer communities like the Issaquah Highlands. Uh, and then beyond that, in the coming years, we're really gonna be focused on um, you know, where do we want our water supply to come from? And how are we ensuring that we're keeping water rates as low, as affordable as possible? You know, we, uh, us on city council, the mayor's office, we've always got you guys in mind um, and what we can do to keep prices as low and affordable as possible. So in the future, that may mean uh, shutting off our groundwater wells and just buying more of Cascade Water Alliance water. Uh, but we're getting a little ahead of ourselves, more, more to come on that in, in the future. Yeah, this is a great example of what I was just talking about. So um, in our most recent capital improvement plan that we're about to pass uh, this month or next month, um, in this, the capital improvement plan is our city's planning document for how we're gonna spend our money over the next six years in terms of capital things, like real things. Um, we've got funding for what's called the SPAR booster pump station, which is a mouthful. Um, but essentially what that'll do is provide um, an ability to pump extra water up to the highlands. So that's kind of what, what I was saying earlier. It'll provide, you know, better reliability up in the highlands, better redundancy up in the highlands, just in case something happens. So I'm, I'm excited about that. And I think you should be too. This is a very important question. Uh, thank you very much for asking it. Um, first and foremost, I just want to say three things off the bat. One, if you live in the Isqua Highlands, uh, this doesn't apply to you right now. Um, in the Highlands, we get our water from our regional water supply. Um, if I also just want to say right off the bat that you know our commitment here at the city to getting you safe, clean, 
reliable drinking water is a top priority for us, for us on council, for the mayor, for the incredible system uh, and network of city employees that are just dedicated to maintaining and operating the water system we rely on. Um, and then finally, I just wanna say that Issaquah consistently meets all its water quality standards requirements. Consistently and year to year, I just wanna reiterate that. Uh, all right, so let's get into this. So back in 2015, we discovered trace amounts of PFOS in one of our uh, groundwater wells. And just real quickly, PFOS is a group of chemicals uh, previously and widely used in a number of commercial products. Uh, in firefighting foams that we now know are unhealthy. Um, so anyways, we found those trace amounts in 2015 uh, and the city took action right away. So we installed an advanced filtration system to address the problem. Uh, and with that treatment, like I said earlier, we have consistently met all federal standards set by the EPA, the, the Environmental Protection Agency. Um, since then, too, um, we've really taken it upon ourselves to be an active leader in this space. Uh, we're currently in the midst of an effort alongside the state's uh, Department of Ecology and Eastside Fire and Rescue uh, to investigate and address potential sources of PFOS on the valley floor. Um, and this work will actually help state and federal agencies better understand how to regulate PFOS testing and cleanup. So Issaquah nationwide is actually on the forefront here. Um, and I'm really proud of the work that we're doing here. You know, um, a, a number of things I'll say here, you know, um, up here in the Highlands, they were a little bit of a newer community. So already some of the products that we're using, uh, the appliances that we have in our homes are more efficient. Um, so being mindful of that is important. Um, the only other thing I would say is just to be mindful of your own footprint. You know, a lot of people think that, well, I live on a small yard, the things I'm doing in my yard, we're up on this hill, it can't have that much of an impact on what happens in the greater Puget Sound area. Um, but the thing is, a lot of people think that way. And that really adds up into a massive impact in our ecosystem, in our watershed, and in the greater Puget Sound area. So uh, one big takeaway here is that small changes actually make a really big difference over time. So a um, couple things, um, always be on the lookout for any type of car leaks that you might have and make sure to get those addressed right away. The oils there are, are, um, are not good for the environment. Um, even being mindful of the kinds of plants that you have in your yard um, you know, even picking um, plants that naturally resist pests or need less water is helpful. And, you know, it's okay. Uh, a lot of us here in Issaquah um, really like having a, a big green lawn that we cut all the time. I grew up with a nice lawn too. That's totally fine. Uh, if that's you, um, also be mindful of the kinds of products that you're putting in your yard. Um, one third of all the copper pollution that's found in the Puget Sound area uh, comes from pesticides and fertilizers that contain copper. Uh, and copper is actually really bad for salmon in particular. It makes it hard uh, for them to see predators. It makes it har hard for them to get back to their spawning grounds like here in Issaquah. Um, so if you're a true lover of Issaquah and salmon days, you've got to be mindful of that. Um, and if you're really interested in getting more into this, I would recommend you check out uh, PugetSoundStartsHere.org. Uh, they've got some really good information, really great information on small things that you can do. Um, and I would recommend checking that out.